we do live investigations of ongoing internet or or pop culture drama. Uh, we don't generally cover anything like streamer drama, but we do cover drama for larger figures in politics and the online left in particular, because that's where I find myself and it's relevant to my audience, including, excuse me, probably you. Um, these are recorded live. Um, if you ever want to catch these, you got to swing by my stream. But if you want to see the old ones, they're all on this channel. So make sure you pop down below, press that subscribe button, and check out the, the backlog. We have a whole playlist just devoted to Drama Mama. So today, we are going to be talking about a couple of pretty big figures. How many people here are familiar with a fella by the name... Spoon of spoon. Dimi Jore. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Jimmy Dore. Dore? Jimmy Dore. Jimmy Dore. That's what that's what it is. Who here is familiar with Jimmy Dore? Well, uh, not a whole lot, it looks like. Some people do. Oh, okay, here we go. Oh, all right. Now we're getting some people. Now the chat's waking up a little bit. Uh yeah, yeah. Jimmy Dore has been running a a political show on the internet uh for some time and uh jimmy Dore is let's just say a controversial figure okay um he has a lot of very very passionate fans and he has has a lot of very very passionate uh anti you know non-fans anti-fans i guess would be the word um for sure that's a lot of us right you could probably describe me that way um i have a lot of people who really don't like me i have a lot of people who like me but what we're talking about today is not whether people like or dislike Jimmy Dore, nor whether people like or dislike the other people involved in this particular drama, who I will introduce momentarily. But we are going to try to get to the bottom of what actually happened, what takeaways there are, and what we can learn from it. When I do a drama, Mama, my goal is to try and familiarize people who may not know everything about the drama catch them up, and then try to pull at whatever conclusions as fairly as we can from the drama. I have my own personal thoughts, obviously, on nearly every single person who I have to talk about drama with. That's just natural. But what I try to do is I try to dispense with the bias, um, you know, in advance to the best of my ability as is possible. But at the end of the day, this is just a drama mama, and the goal is to catch you up so you know what the hell is going on. So the other party that is involved in this particular drama is a news, a lefty, left-leaning, I would say, news group known as the Young Turks, or TYT. For those who don't know, the Young Turks were, are a, in my opinion, incredibly, incredibly influential, mostly internet show, though they have uh, been broadcast both on the radio and on television. Um... Oh, you've never heard of the Young Turks? Well, there are many. They are, you know, very popular. Um, uh, some other people you might recognize as having been associated with the Young Turks in the past is uh, the most popular political streamer in the world, Hassan. Sound familiar? Hassan Abi? Uh, yeah. Uh, literally used to be a member of TYT and left in a, a whole separate swarm of drama we're not even going to talk on talk about. Other members that you might recognize from TYT are people such as Jink Uger, Uyghur, Uyghur. I always mispronounce his name because I know it's very similar to Uyghur, but I don't think it's actually how it's said. I apologize. Um, and Anna Kasparian, um, who are sort of the most recognizable hosts that TYT has ever had. Uh, and they are the found. They are the sort of founding and uh, producing members of the show right now. Yes, Jenk is. Um, it's Uger. Okay, thank you. Uh, Jenk is Hassan's uncle. Um, yeah, that's kind of a, a well-known public uh, thing. They've had some public spats. They've gone back and forth. Now, Jimmy Dore and the Young Turks have had have both had their fair not just their sh not just the personalities I should say their entire shows have had their fair share of drama over the years um you know it's it seems almost inevitable that there's going to be clashes in politics that is 
kind of what politics is all about. But when I say that there's been drama, I mean that there's been a lot of interpersonal drama as well. Um, for example, recently, there was some pretty major drama between uh, another popular broadcaster by the name of Sam Cedar um, and Jimmy Dore, uh, the, Jim the Jimmy Dore show, over a uh, currently, well, a no longer relevant, but uh, relevant as of early 2021 political issue called force the vote this um exploded into a whole bunch of very public conflicts including some clips of jimmy Dore um essentially screaming at a uh a young um political activist over video it was uh there was a lot of very in my opinion fair criticism in that situation um and uh and of course to to maintain that we're talking about this as a form of drama and not to like you know color your judgment of either side um tyt has had a a, a very public conflict with their own union um you know which might seem a little bit hypocritical given that they are a purportedly leftist organization and they fought with their own union uh the union that was try their talent was trying to turn into very very complicated and there's a lot of messiness on all sides however what we are talking about today is none of that drama none of that drama is actually particularly relevant i just wanted to give people an idea of the sort of caliber of organizations we're dealing with the jimmy Dore show is very large and very popular tyt is incredibly large and popular some people would even consider tyt to be like almost almost mainstream news at this point even though they are technically independent and viewer supported they do run ads they have um tv presence radio presence they have a whole studio they've been going for a long time they have a lot of connections and the reason why we're talking about this is because I don't even know if it's fair to say that allegations have come out against Jimmy Dore more that Jimmy Dore released allegations against himself and then attempted to um and then attempted to uh distance himself from the allegations that he released we're going to watch this together and we're going to react to it as a part of this investigation and then we're going to talk about that because i think this is a super important issue um but i just want to make it clear that uh when we're talking about when i say the allegations here these allegations were never made publicly by the person who is who was the the alleged victim um, Anna Kasparian, the well-known and well-recognized founder and host of the Young Turks, um, actually never made these public. Uh, but Jimmy Dore did, which is a little odd. And I think that will all make sense once we get into the actual footage. And yes, this is about to get wild. Oh, yes, it is about to get wild. So let me just get our media that we have prepared for the day queued up here. Um, uh, yeah, uh, I mean, the thing is that, like, uh, people have their critiques, by the way. People have fair critiques for um, for TYT. People have, in you know, fair critiques for Jimmy Dore. And we're going to discuss the relevant ones as we go. But first, we need to kind of get to the root of the issue. And the way that we're going to do that is by watching this together and reacting to it. So let me just get this uh, this little period, uh, this little spot timed right up here. Here we go. This is from a bonus episode of The Young Turks, which was originally for members only, but has since, of course, been made public. Um, and in this clip, we are going to hear a, a sort of telling of the course of events from Chink and Anna Kasparian. And we are also going to hear from Jimmy Dore himself. Once again, the strange thing about this situation is that Anna Kasparian never publicly released these allegations. And yes, before we go any further, allow me to give a sort of courtesy trigger warning. Um, 
though nothing in here is is extremely extremely explicit um it's it's sexual harassment like a lot of sexual harassment is going to be discussed about um so please keep that in mind if that's a topic that you don't want to hear or you or you you it's bothersome to you or it's it's triggering just keep that in mind i always do these as a courtesy when we're talking about really serious issues but for some people these can be really really traumatic and whatnot so um without any further ado let us react together and and watch the 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 content from from the source shall we let's do it all right uh back in the bonus raging, episode uh, guys raging. we're gonna do something different today than we normally do uh, unfortunately, we're gonna have to address something pretty serious, um, and uh, there's just no way around it. Uh, so we want to make sure that you guys saw it because there's a lot of people um, that are lying online, and and I want you guys to have access to uh, reality. Okay, so let me get started. Um, so unfortunately, uh, Jimmy Dore used to work here. Uh, it's a decision I deeply regret. Uh, we try to expand the spectrum of what is acceptable thought. Uh, and so corporate media has it easy. They just have to ask, do you believe in the status quo? And people answer that. Now this is now, now this part right here, this is an ad, which I don't like this. But uh, I guess respect to the hustle for um, plugging your, your channel as you're about to talk about very serious, um, you know, allegations uh yeah uh yes dave dave rubin did used to work at tyt dave rubin used to think he used to say he was a leftist all kinds of things um but yeah this is kind of like whatever let's just continue not explicitly but implicitly through their answers and then they get hired that way uh we hire a wide range of folks and sometimes it goes wrong and jimmy's one of those examples so um and i found out recently uh, about an incident that happened um uh, while he was working here, and now the person. Um, so that's something to note that Jimmy Dore worked at TYT for a brief period of time, which you know that was just stated. But this is something that even Cenk, uh, even Cenk didn't know. That's talking about it is Jimmy. Uh, so he has been attacking us online over and over again with nothing but lies and smears, some of which I'm going to show you right now. Um, but we still held back, held back, and, and of course it's frustrating. He was a friend, uh, or at least I thought he was, uh, to me and to a lot of people here. And we've been a little shell-shocked by not the disagreements, who cares? We had disagreements when he was here, that's not an issue at all. Um, but by honestly the lies and, and the smears and the attacks, they were deeply personal in nature. So. Uh, both Anna and I got frustrated, and at one point she sent him a DM that I'm going to, uh, that Jimmy's going to talk about in this clip that we're going to show you, and it was basically saying, "Look, we know all these things uh, about you that we haven't shared before," in a way of saying, "We are holding back while you're going nuts." Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so, do you have no humanity or decency? And then you're about to find out the answer to that because this is what. So, just so that we're all clear, this is what we are about to see is a response to a DM. Now, we talk about this kind of stuff online um, all the time, right? Like the, you know, because it's kind of a new thing. Uh, leaking private messages is a new problem. Um, <laughs> I don't really know if there was an equivalent in the past, right? Like uh, in the past, maybe recording a private conversation or maybe a letter like if you exposed a letter but uh the the concept of leaking dms is something that um <laughs> understandably um causes some issues in the modern era and um yeah people would leak letters would they really was it i mean i'm sure there were some letters leaked yeah like letters and memos and te and like stuff like that I i'm sure there were some yeah um uh, but uh, I, I know there's obviously some equivalence, but it's a little different in the digital age, right? Because it's a, it's a lot, it's a lot more. 
it's just more. It's internet-y, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah, I know it was seriously a thing. I know there were telegrams and there were memos and things like that. There have been leaks. There have always been leaks. There have been wires, you know what I mean, are like a huge thing that were leaked in government situations. But what we're talking about now is that there is a new type of media, the private message, which can exist across multiple platforms and it can be easily shared and it can also be incredibly easily doctored. And on top of that, there seems to be no like universally even loosely agreed upon standards for when it is okay or when it is appropriate to leak a DM. Um, like, I mean, we, I mean, how many of you here, I'm sure just throw a, just throw a, uh, just throw a, um, a, a, a thinky fish in chat. If you, if you've, it watched a drama unfold online that involved the leaking of DMs. Just throw a thinky fish in chat real quick. Um, go ahead and give me a thinky fish. Yeah, look at that. We're going to get a huge combo. I know. It, it is. It is. It seems to be a part of almost every single type of drama that happens online. We got a, a 13 combo, and now we're getting a, a 20 combo. For those of you who don't know what that means, these are people posting the emote from chat in response to me asking for it. We're getting like a 35 combo. Everyone has seen an internet drama that involves the leaking of DMs. And nobody nobody agrees on it. N nobody agrees on when you should do this or not. I think that we can all agree that there are times where it's appropriate to leak a DM. Like for example, um, what if uh, somebody threatens you via a private message? Is it then appropriate? to uh to uh leak a dm well what if it wasn't a threat what if you leak a dm something that was supposed to be understood in private um and you leak that and as and to my knowledge there aren't a whole lot of laws about this either so it's so it's mostly a ethical issue isn't it um yeah no problem cocaine 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 i don't know if i said that right So, um, you had your number leaked two days ago. I'm very sorry to hear that. Yeah, see, there's a lot of things like this. There's also, you know, this does tie into clipping out of context, screenshots, things like that. It's really difficult. And it adds a lot of um, complexity to this. So, basically, the reason why I'm talking about this is because before we look at the DMs, I want us to understand that leaking DMs is a complicated process. And sometimes people will get an impression from something that uh like oh i'm being threatened but there's another side of it too which is that sometimes people will find any excuse to leak a dm um, yeah and then there's of course there's other situations posadas john brings up a, a pretty notable drama between two other big lefty streamer figures between vosh and mike from pa to uh some people might not know who those people are but it was a rather large drama and there was some dm leaking that became a issue of discussion there there is a there is a lot of um there's a lot of stuff to be talked about and i'm sure we'll talk about it a little more i just wanted to give that little preamble before we get into this part be said on air but before we get to that yeah, yeah so i want to be um I want to be clear about something. So the DM that I and for those who don't know, this is Anna Kasparian, one of the founders and the uh, decades-long host of TYT. Sent him um, specifically called him out on his constant sexual harassment of me at this place at, at TYT. Um, I also want to be clear wow. that I didn't talk about it with anyone. I didn't never talked about it with Jake until very recently. Um, because, uh, for obvious reasons. Uh, I agree. I agree, and by the so way. And so I sent him that DM. For those in chat who are saying that Anna is a good reporter, I tend to agree. I think Anna is a, a, a supreme professional. I have a lot of respect for Anna Kasparian. I don't agree with her on everything, but I do have a lot of respect for her. Because the harassment has continued. It's not sexual harassment. It's been constant harassment online. That wouldn't go away. Doesn't matter if I ignore him, which some of my friends, my leftist friends, have told me, just ignore him. It'll go away. Just ignore him. Ignore him. Kept going and going and going, directing trolls at me nonstop. And finally, I couldn't take it anymore. So I sent him that message saying, You remember what you did to me. 
Yeah. And I, I can't stand that he positions himself as this moral fighter for progressive values when he and I both know the kind of behavior he engaged in when he was working here. So I, I wanted to give you that context. So, so by the way, why didn't Anna tell me? Uh, because I would have fired him. And no good deed goes unpunished. So she didn't tell me. Hey, there you go. That's, hey, that's pretty upfront. That's pretty upfront of, of Jenk to say. I would have taken, I would have reacted strongly and fired him outright. That is, and you might think, oh, he's just, he's just trying to make himself look good here. But no, that's, that's something that, that's a reason why a lot of people don't come forward, by the way. Just so you know, in cases of sexual harassment, a lot of people never report it because even if, um, even if, uh, uh, you don't like somebody like say like put yourself in in Anna's shoes say that somebody is being se like creepy or sexually harassing to you and you don't want to destroy their life maybe they've got kids maybe they got a family you just want them to stop harassing you and not do it anymore you don't necessarily want to punish them if you tell your co-worker Chank in this case and you know he's going to fire him you might not talk about it because you're nervous because of that reaction so in this case, I actually think on this, I'm willing to say that I think Chenk is being very honest here. And he's owning up to the fact that he would have reacted very strongly. And that may have led to Anna not talking about it. That's kind of, I think that's respectable. And I think we should, you know, I have, a, again, I have a lot of critiques for Chenk. But I think this is a, a totally valid uh, thing for him to say and own up to up front. He, he kept uh, working here. Uh, and next thing you know, he's about to tell you a story of what happened. Now, ironically, there's lies in here too. But l l let us show you who Jimmy Dore actually is. Here, let's begin. But here's what she here's how she's trying to threaten me. And I'll tell you why this is a big mistake on her part. She says, I'm sure. So real quick, before he talks, I just want you to know, I just want you to notice something. The last message that Anna sent before this message was in 2016, five years ago, April of 2016. Anna has not DM'd or messaged uh, Jimmy since, and he shows this right here, that she has not messaged him in five years on this platform. Do you remember when you constantly made inappropriate comments about how sexy you found me at work and even felt the need to ask me where I shop for my jeans so you can buy a pair for your wife so she dresses better? Thank you. Uh, that okay. was followed by an apology card you wrote Oof. me for the degrading harassment. I've been holding back, letting you run your mouth nonstop as if you're some sort of warrior for what's good in the world. That's going to change. So now she's, instead of saying I'm paid by the Russians or saying I'm working for Assad, she's now going to try to pretend I sexually harassed her when I was at the Young Turks. <laughs> okay, let's continue. Now, I give you that as a lead into what he's about, the story he's about to tell you, okay? So he claims and laughs about how Anna was pretending to, that he was sexually harassing her. Then we don't have to say anything else. Let Jimmy tell you what he thinks happened. I'll tell you this story, the story about uh, uh, that was followed by an apology card you wrote me for a degrading harassment. Uh, Anna Kasparian, used to dress when I worked there uh, unbelievably inappropriately for a newsroom. <laughs> she looked like she was going to a rave. The skirt, one time she came into the newsroom with a skirt so short. It wasn't a pencil skirt. It was like a fluffy one too, but so short that she bent over in front of me and I literally saw her ass and her thong. She's wearing a thong. I literally saw it. Everybody saw it. And I go, hey, Anna, nice news skirt. <laughs> and everybody laughed like they laughed louder than I thought they would. Whew. And so it humiliated her. She got humiliated in the middle of the newsroom and I did it and I felt bad. I, I, at that time we were friendly and I was just busting her balls, right? For, for dressing like that in a newsroom. 
<laughs> You're going to bend over and show me your ass? I think that's a little... I'm not offended, but I think that's a little risque. Um, imagine if I did that. I walked around <laughs> showing my ass to everybody. So... Uh, Okay, I, I can't miss this one. This is a, this is. I'm gonna indulge in just a minute. You, you're showing your ass to everybody right now, buddy. Sorry, I, I just needed to make that one joke. Sorry, please, please. I hope that doesn't bias the entire coverage. But uh, when she did, so when Thank I did you, that, too, she got really comment. mad. She got you know she got uh, humiliated. Seriously. Her face turned red. She tried to insult me back, and it just fell flat. And she looked, you know, bad. And I felt bad for her. I didn't fight. I didn't want to make her feel that, but I just wanted to make a little joke. And um, all I said was, hey, Anna, nice news skirt. And everybody in the newsroom, because everybody saw how inappropriate she dresses. She used to dress. And everybody saw it. And uh, so that's why it got such a huge laugh, and she was so humiliated. So he just tells a story, like... Ha ha, I humiliated her then, and now I'm going to tell you a story of how funny it was that I tried to humiliate her. Now, since it's Jimmy, half the story's not true, of course. And but but assume it is. That's your big hero right there that does that to women, looks up their skirt and then laughs at them, and then pretends it's their fault that he's looking up their skirt. Now, parts of the story that aren't true. Of course, Anna wasn't wearing a skirt that short. Of course, nobody else saw that pervert was trying to desperately look. That's why he made apparently several comments about her body before. Damn. And 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 by the way, who was in the room? Anna was teaching at the time, and she had brought in her students, her college students here. No, they did not laugh out loud. Oh boy, uh, yeah. Jimmy. Oh my God. Oh my God! In his own mind, thinks it's hilarious uh, to be a pervert sexual harasser like that, and thinks, "Oh, all the kids will love that. It'll be such a funny joke." As I try to humiliate their professor in front of them. Yeah. So the reason why he wrote the apology card was because every time he had made inappropriate comments about me at work, I ignored it. You know, uh, but. As I was walking into the studio, because my students were supposed to watch the show, it was their final assignment, watch the show, and there was a written assignment related to the show. And as I was walking in with them, that was when he made the comment, and he didn't make a comment about a news skirt. He made a comment about how sexy my legs were in front of my students. And it was degrading, obviously. and. I'm, I, want, I want my students to respect me and take me seriously. Seeing a, an older man that I work with talk about my body like that in front of my students was wrong. And so for the first time, I actually snapped at him and told him to never make a comment like that about me again. And so I think he realized, oh, I think I might have gone, I think I like, I think now she might actually like make a big deal about this, and that's why she, he wrote me that apology card to basically try to calm things down. But I mean, comments continued after that. Wait, like that's who he. But it worked. Like, even though, and I and I and I want to point this out right now as it's happening because this is a really important thing for us to note when we're doing these drama mama investigations. I just really want to note that Anna accepted the apology letter. Even though Anna was absolutely wrong and had literally no reason to accept to accept an apology letter after that level of of harassment of alleged alleged harassment in this case, she had no reason to accept it, but she did. And there's no reason there are multiple people have corroborated that this was an event that happened now, and we know that the letter was sent because Jimmy admitted it. Jimmy himself admitted the letter was sent. So there's not even, we don't even have to investigate that part. Jimmy admitted this actually happened and that he sent the letter, but he apparently left out some details. He was, and he was, you know, he pretends as if he's like a fighter for progressive. I'm sorry, what did I say? 
Did I say did I say Anna was wrong? No, no, no. Did I just stumble on my words? I apologize if I if I mixed up my words there. Even though Anna didn't do anything wrong. Even though Anna had no re no need to accept that letter. Sorry if I I'm really sorry if I mixed up my No, oh oh yeah, I thought I said she was wronged. She was wronged. Sorry, that's Okay, yes. I I remember now what I said. Yes, I said that she was wronged. I apologize. That's that's just Okay, that's just a misunderstanding. That will be cleared up simply. Okay, that's simple. Small mistake, okay? Values. I heard the way that he spoke to Live producers show. here. He How it goes. is anything but the so-called leftist that he tries to present himself to be, and his audience reflects that. His audience reflects that in the way that they responded to that video. Because anyone on the left Anyone who wants to fight for decency, to ensure that everyone lives a life of de decency, wouldn't watch that video and think, oh no, that's my guy. That's who I want to side with. That's who I want to fight with. Because everything that Jimmy does on a daily basis, it's enti his entire intention is to be indecent and to be incredibly cruel to others. Regardless of how much he agrees with them, regardless of how little disagreement he has politically speaking with these individuals, it's literally his bread and butter. This is how he makes his money. Yeah, look, this is not about canceling anyone in two ways. One, he didn't say that 20 years ago. He said that this weekend, this weekend. So he's proud of it. And he took that as an example of can you believe what Anna did wrong? I'll tell you that story in a bragging way and laugh about how funny I am and what I did to her in front of her students and in front of the whole studio. And aren't I so wonderful, etc. And if you think, way to go, Jimmy, I think you're a terrible person, but have at it. Then watch him, don't watch us. I don't want you watching us if you thought that was a great story that should be celebrated. No, and that's the main, that's the main point. That's, so I wanna be clear about something, I love our members. But I want to be clear about who we are and the kind of audience we want to foster. Because this isn't just about building an audience, it's about building a movement and, and working with people. Because we work with our audience all the time in uh, pressure campaigns in regard to like Congress and ensuring that we get a vote on a $15 an hour minimum wage. We want fighters beside us and we want people who have the right ethics and morals to do this with us, right? If you watch that and you think there, there wasn't a big deal, I think that was totally fine. If there are any remnants of Jimmy Dore's fans within our membership, within our audience, and you see this and you think like, oh, I'm disappointed in we'll you, watch Anna. That too, Yellow. I wanna let you know, I don't want you in our audience. Wow. You are not part of what we're trying to do. Okay, so spare me the tweets about how disappointed you are and how you're canceling membership. I, I do not care. I don't care. For I, I encourage it because I don't want that toxicity. I don't want that culture as part of anything we do at TYT, whether it's internal in the office or external with our audience, wow. period. That's it. Yeah, now guys, a, a lot of you didn't see that. That's why we're showing it to you. A lot, we, we did a couple stories today about Syria, etc. Because a lot of you didn't see it. So it's okay if you didn't see it and, and, and now you do, right? But what we're saying is if you see that and you, you, you think that's great, uh, haha, this sexually harassing women at work and making fun of their clothes and t telling everybody that you, you, you know, Aristocracy TV says, to be honest, I think even some right-wingers would be grossed up by that video. I think many right-wingers would be grossed up by this video. I don't think that that behavior is necessarily a partisan issue. Of course, I do tend to think that right-wingers are a little more permissive of this sort of thing. However, I don't think that that's a partisan issue. What you, you, you're looking at underneath their clothes, and stuff, if you think that's great, that's why we're telling you, that if you're associated with us, I'm worried you're gonna cause more problems, right? So if like if Jimmy wants all those toxic folks who are, are right, generally speaking, most of them are right wing, but I know that he's tricked some left wingers into thinking he's a leftist. If you think that's leftist, have at it, okay? That's all we're saying, it's that simple. We, we love our audience, we think you guys are incredibly smart 
and care so much and have already made a giant difference in the world. All right, look, I'm gonna give you more if you weren't already convinced. He had Max Blumenthal from Gray Zone on oh boy, here uh, we go. with him. He tells that story, then turns to Max. Let's look at- Okay, Max Blumenthal, an another figure who has been the subject of a lot, lot of drama online, okay? A lot of drama. The Gray Zone writer has been and just so we know who this person is, for those who don't know, Max Blumenthal is a writer for The Gray Zone. The Gray Zone is a, let's just say, a controversial uh, publication, okay? Let's continue. Notice Max's reaction and then Jimmy's reaction thinking, oh, this- Oh, uh, and not to, to pause two times in a row here, but aristocracy brings up, we are a movement. I don't know, that feels weird. I agree. I don't like that type of advertisement. Uh, I've criticized that many times. We're not really here to criticize that in particular today, but I do think that's a little above and beyond. Let's continue. Story might not have killed in the way that I thought it did. Watch. Uh, so you just you kind of screwed the pooch there. But good luck. Good luck. I'm sure you'll get some uh, shit libs to retweet it for you. But it will have... I don't have a manager. And I don't have a human resource department. So uh, let's bring in Max. Now, um, Max, where, where would you like to take the conversation? <laughs> wow. Wow, dude. Look at that. Now that is... who boy right there. Holy shit. Can we watch? Can I watch that again? Oh my God, I need to see that reaction. Uh, let's bring in Max now. Um, Max, where, where would you like to take the conversation? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this isn't uh, really where I thought the conversation was going to go. I don't have the same history with these people. So, uh huh. I uh, have no problem with Anna Kasparian's style of dress. I, I, uh, let's talk to have, them. We, have, we don't have a dress code at the gray zone. People can show up however they want. Um, I, I do have a problem with this campaign of McCarthyite lies. And honestly, I'm, I'm even hesitant to get in the gutter with these people. Now, you can tell he was uncomfortable because it, what Jimmy had said was so awful. But understand that at the end, Max Blumenthal was talking about us <sighs> being in the gutter. That we're in the gutter and that Jimmy is the one trying to clean us up and get, get into a, and engage in a rational conversation with us. And the one thing that is enormously true is no, uh, Jimmy does not have an HR department, that is for sure. Uh, now, this is not the only instance of these guys, again, pretending to be on the left, uh, going after our appearances. So Roger Waters was on. They're so ecstatic. They're like, oh my God, a random Pink Floyd guy from like 80 years ago. He's got to be the chemical weapons expert in Syria. And he's got to be the progressive policy expert that we all dream about. He's on with Katie Halper and others. Um, but instead of talking about that, uh, first he called me fat. Oh my God, you broke news there. Nobody saw that coming. Uh, I've never gotten that except for the <laughs> 10 million times I've gotten it. Guess why? Because I. Oh, God, boy, listen, Chank, you and I, for one second, me and Chank are like this. Wow, you called me fat. Congratulations. Good job. You did it. You got it. I'm fat. Woof. I got gotcha. you. I actually am overweight. Got me. This is not a got you, but okay, so you want to uh, talk about my appearance. Who cares? Okay. But then he couldn't help himself. So Roger Waters says this as everybody else nods along. Yeah, let's do more sexism. To listen to that garbage and disgusting and foul mouthed, I have to say. <laughs> that young lady, well, I, I, I hesitate to call her a young lady because she's not, she's clearly not in the prime of youth. But that's neither here nor there. She's not in the prime of youth. So. Ooh. Is that? Oh, no. That's Leslie Lee the Third. I generally like Les Leslie Lee the Third a lot. Oh, oh, that's not good, dude. That's neither here nor there. She's not in the primary use, says Roger Waters. She, another comment about her appearance and the so-called left laughs along. <laughs> Let's make fun of people's appearances and look up their skirt. And that's the way to be progressive. Uh, I think you might have missed what it means to be a progressive. Now, uh, we've covered that amply, uh, unfortunately. Um, 
Now I want to talk about his lies real quick. Uh, in that same segment uh, Jimmy had with Max Blumenthal, uh, Jimmy made up my position on Syria. Out of whole cloth, every part of this is a lie. Let's watch. They were pro-bombing Syria in 2014, 17. They've always, they, Jenk said Trump didn't bomb Syria enough. Uh, so he's, he's all for bombing brown people. I'm all for brown, bombing brown people. I'm from the Middle East. It's a talking point that he has that he uses against others. Yep. So, and he doesn't have a plan B. So he's like, Jake is against bombing brown or in favor of bombing brown people. I don't know, said the Jimmy, who is apparently the expert on brown people. But, but that's actually. Yes, this, this is Cenk, this is Hassan's uncle. Yes. Less important than the first stuff he said. Totally made up. Yep. We were never in favor of bombing Syria. Never, ever, ever. And by the way, saying that a chemical weapons attack happened, and we did an hour long segment on it earlier today, and you could watch it for yourself and you could make your own independent judgment, doesn't mean you want to bomb Syria. In fact, we went out of our ways to say every single time we are not for American imperialism, we are not for bombing Syria, we are not for attacking Syria. But it doesn't matter what we say because Jimmy's gonna lie anyway. What difference is your actual position when he's just gonna make it up? And said that I said that Trump didn't bomb Syria enough. Show me the video. Well, it's funny because someone actually shared a screenshot of one of your old tweets where um, Madeleine Albright had said that she wished that Obama had followed through on his red line in regard to the Syrian regime using chemical weapons. Remember, he had said that his red line is, if they use chemical weapons, we will retaliate. The United States will retaliate against Bashar al-Assad's regime. And then he didn't follow through on it. And Madeleine Albright was criticizing him for it. Your response to Madeleine Albright, and this is in a screenshotted tweet, you can check it on my Twitter account, was why does she want to bomb? Like what happened to diplomacy? Yeah. Why can't we do this through diplomacy? Exactly. So you can't find me saying we should bomb Syria or that Trump didn't bomb Syria enough because it's an unmitigated lie. And that's why buyer beware. You know, just because somebody's saying something doesn't mean it's true. You have to look at the and investigate a little bit to see what the facts are. Speaking of liars, uh, Max Blumenthal then jumped in at the end of the interview with another lie. Uh, and get a load of this whopper. I remember Jenk when, when Trump happened, Jenk said, the CIA is good now. They're our friends. <laughs> yes. We need to drop our opposition to the CIA. No, he said that. that. Um, I remember distinctly him saying that. Oh, I bet. I, mean, I wouldn't put it past him. It's funny that they lie and then their lies are so outrageous. The other one's like, really? And their stories are so ridiculous. The other one's like, ah, right? Did I say the CIA are our friends now and we shouldn't <laughs> criticize them now yeah, that totally, Trump is yeah. enough? Of course not, of course, that's insane, that's insane. So when pressed on that outrageous lie, they, Max's uh, fallback was, well in one tweet, uh, you refer to our intelligence agencies as our guys. Woo! Is that any of the things that he just said there? Nailed it. He nailed it. Okay. Yeah. That I was, you know, that the CIA are good guys now. We should just trust them. No, we don't say that at the Young Turks. Max Blumenthal is an outrageous liar. And that is a tip of the iceberg of his tremendous lies uh, at Gray Zone. Those are t t different topics. We've covered some of them. Uh, but guys, buyer beware on all of these people pretending to be on the left and then meanwhile helping it. Authoritarian governments mm -hmm. do their propaganda mysteriously. Oh no! Max Blumenthal. Uh, it's Blumenthal. You've almost got it. It's not blooming. It's Blumen. E N. Blumenthal. Max Blumenthal is. Uh, uh, I believe he's the founder of the Gray Zone. Um, and just so you know, um, uh, just just so you know, uh, the Gray Zone has been. I want to be diplomatic about this, but they have been incredibly critical um, with regard to the uh, the situation of the Uyghurs in China. And when I say critical, I mean not of China. They have been they have been heavily critical of the idea that there are Uyghurs being interned in China, which, as far as we can tell is a simple fact. 
Um, now, as far as I know, they haven't outright denied it. However, the gray zone um, was in hot water relatively recently um, and heavily critiqued because their implication was that it is not as bad as the left as some members of the left were making it so that's neither here nor there just an awareness of the previous type of conflict that has been going on here Oh, Trump, I just can't find a way to criticize him. Republicans who are a lot of my Patreon supporters, I can't find a way to criticize the right wing. Hey, look at all, all these trolls that are on Twitter. They all ha seem to have nothing but right wing tweets. But oh, golly gee, uh, I think the only uh, people that are guilty are progressives in Congress and progressives in the media. You guys should, all of you who are on the left, and by the way, there are real people who are on the left who f follow Jimmy yep. and follow Gray Zone. And and again, you didn't know, that's okay. But if you watch all this and you say, oh no, I'm still on it. I still love these guys. Even though there's obvious, obvious, obvious liars. Well, that's up to you. That's that's your call to make and you have added Hoss, okay? But now you know. Now, last thing, Jimmy in an interview with Jordan Charrington, um, talked about how a mysterious executive here at TYT said something to him. Uh, this is also a lie, but there's something interesting in it if it were true, let's watch. I was told by an executive at TYT after they took that $20 million, Jimmy, we know we have to move to the center. An executive told him that at TYT that we have to move to the center. <laughs> of course that didn't happen. By the way, the guy he's referring to was a really good friend of his that he's now lying about, okay? Now, but that's not the issue. My question is this, huh. Jimmy, you worked here for several years after we got that investment. And if you think an executive told you to move to the center and you kept working here, what principles do you have? Oof. So an executive at a media company that you work for, that you host shows at, told you to go center and you listened to him and kept collecting paychecks year after year? That's your view of the story. That's your side of the story, you just heard it yourself. Now, I remember when the executives at MSNBC told me that I should take it easy on corporate Democrats. I turned down over a million bucks because I actually have principles. Yeah. If you believe Jimmy, Oof. even if you don't believe us, you just heard him say it. And you believe Jimmy, he just told you, "Oh, I'll take a check. I don't care what they tell me to do. I'll do anything for money. Damn. So that's who Jimmy Dore is. It, and most of all, it's just super sad. It's a, he's a sad, weak man, uh, and he's chasing um, views and attention and money. And, and the, when he attacks us, he gets more popularity, both from the right wing and more views, because the algorithms say, hey, that's the biggest show. You mention them, you're gonna get more views. Yep. So he, he feeds into it because he's weak. And he just wants it so bad, he wants to be famous and get that attention so bad that he's willing to do anything for it. And you just saw it with your own eyes. And again, look, we're talking about this because I want more than anything to put this behind me despite the fact that the attacks are gonna continue, I know that. But- It's inevitable, yep. I, I'm not interested in doing this show to talk about my drama. I'm interested in doing this show because I think what we do here is important. I wanna get information to you guys. I wanna collaborate with you guys. For me, that is the reason why I'm here. And I don't wanna waste any more time with this nonsense regarding like, ooh, is it TYT or Jimmy? Oh, Anna, I'm disappointed in you. Again, we love our audience, we wanna fight together. But if any of what you see with Jimmy Dore is appealing to you, we're just not on the same team. Wow. And you don't even have to bother contacting me to tell me how disappointed you are. Cancel your membership. Like we're literally telling you that right now. I know, but those are 90% right I know, I know, trolls. I know that it's like- <laughs> They're not actually it is. members. They're not actually <laughs> members, it's, I know it is. And I by the way guys, majority. how do I know? So the guy keeps lying about our numbers too. And that's why I had to post our numbers. He's like, oh, they're failing, they're almost out of business. Well, okay, but we got 14 million hours of viewing. I didn't wanna say it, but you, then, then to do it, oh, now you're gonna brag about it. But no, you said we were failing and we had no viewers. Okay, yeah. and then you say, oh, all your subscribers are leaving. But I see the subscriber numbers every day. No, they're not. Nobody's leaving. I know. We have more subscribers, not less subscribers. So 
It, if you hear something from Jimmy, it is we can incredibly likely to be a lie. Uh, and for his own ego and his own purposes. And last thing on this is, so for some of you watching this, I said this is also dis distasteful, um, and you're right. And so guys, don't get involved in it. But we're damned if we do and damned if we don't. We didn't get involved for month after month as he lied and lied and lied and lied, right? And then people said, well, I guess uh, since you guys are not countering, it must be true. Exactly. Now that when we do counter, people say, oh, hey, why are you guys fighting? Well, when a guy punches you in the face, you have to defend yourself. And so that's what we're doing here. And I and but after this, we're done with them. If you watch these videos and you're still a fan, that's why we're repeating it. Okay, go ahead. That's fine. But we're not going to talk about him if we can help, unless he tells another insane story about how he sexually harassed us and other outrages. Like, I don't know. But we're going to try really hard not to talk about him because he doesn't just hurt us, he hurts the movement. Yes. And he hurts unity within the within progressives. Yes. And uh, and don't let him divide you. Um, but but if you think that's the right path, then have at it. I we can't be any more fair than that. All right. Thank you for uh, hearing us out on this. We appreciate it. We're out of time. Uh, it's been a hell of a day. Thank you for sticking with us, and for all the members, we, we love you so much. And you make this show possible. And uh, and thank you for having our back uh, even when others doubted us. So thank you and we'll see you tomorrow. And that's the segment from TYT. And of course, we're not done with the Drama Mama investigation. We have a lot more that we need to look into, but that was the sort of core <clears throat> of the issue there. And oh yes, uh, somebody in chat here, uh, Just Allen has said, I can only imagine the awful mob that is coming Anna's way. Oh, the mob is here indeed. One of the things I opened this segment with was talking about how both TYT and Jimmy Dore um, have very intense fans and anti-fans. And oh my God, the anti-fans are absolutely fixating on Anna Kasparian right now. And we've talked about this in the past, haven't we, chat? I, um, one of the things I've talked about on this channel a lot is how f fucking difficult it is um, to uh, be a, a femme-presenting person in the political world who uh, is a public figure, how, how much hate you get. It is unbelievable. Every single femme-presenting person I have ever, not just that. First of all, every single public figure I've ever met has had to deal with a lot of harassment online. But women, femme presenting people get so much you can't even fucking imagine. You, you can't even imagine how much hate you get. And I can see already my fellow uh, femme presenting content creators are talk are speaking up in chat. We have some here who are who are talking up about it, who are saying, "Yeah, yeah, we've had an entire pa we've had entire panels over this. It's ridiculous." And you know, I don't know. Uh, I don't know how uh, like they how the comments have been. Uh, I I like uh, you know this was this was a day ago now. Right? No, this was two days ago that this was v this was sent, um, and it's uh, it, it, and it's hard to actually see what type of comments come in because, of course, there's the YouTube algorithm. There's all this sort of stuff, um, and uh, you know, there's not a whole lot. In fact, it looks like on this video alone, there's not a whole lot of comments at all. However, I have heard that other segments have had comments on it, and I am interested. In being fair, so let's take a look at the video itself, shall we? Let's take a look at uh, at at the video itself because um, Jimmy Dore posted a video, okay? And uh, we're gonna look at it. So here is the video that Jimmy Dore posted about this, from which those clips were from, and we are going to watch this thing together. And we're gonna go through it, and we're gonna listen to it, and we're gonna see, because again, Drama Mama is about being as thorough and investigative as possible. We are going to try and find out, um, we're gonna try and find out if it was true. This is a picture of Anna Kasparian flipping off the camera 
um, and says, Anna Kasparian blackmails critics. All right. Well, that is a pretty provocative title and a pretty provocative thumbnail. But to be so fair, to be fair, that is the name of the game on YouTube, is it not? On YouTube, um, it uh, uh, on, on YouTube, it is simply true that that people have to name things spicy things. Okay, so let's pretend. Let's put those aside and let's see if this can stand on itself. Um. Oh, okay. So here we go. Oh wow, these comments are already interesting. Anna is turning into the thing she used to hate. Ann Coulter? Ann Coulter? Wh what? Do, does anybody, people who don't know who Ann Coulter is, Ann Coulter is an extremist, far-right, um, talking head, uh, a propagandist, like one of the most categorically far-right propagandists in America. And this, these comments are saying that, oh, and this has a hundred upvotes, a hundred upvotes from Jimmy's audience. They don't give you two, 20 plus million dollars to tell the truth. Anna has become a parody of herself. Anna isn't a journalist. She's a reaction channel host. 826. TYT, get money out of politics. Also TYT, politicians give us money. The young Turks come across as mentally unstable. We're not interested in facts should be the new TYT shirt. Anna Kasparian is to journalism what Logan Paul is to boxing. Hey, here's a support with eight upvotes. Blaming a woman for getting humiliated because you made an inappropriate comment is bad regardless of the politics or actions of the woman. Why wear that dress though? You can't have it both ways. That is literally just a right-wing talking point. Who knows what she wore? This guy makes it sound like she's a stripper. I've never seen her wear anything that I wouldn't see at my workplace. You must be from the Middle East. Dude, what the fuck? Dude, what the fuck? Everybody needs to remember, even if every one of Kasparian's claims about sexual harassment are true, what does that have to do with Syria? She's a narcissist. She can't be wrong in her head. Your title is wrong. Anna Kasparian threatens to blackmail actual journalists. You're welcome. This Anna person is obviously some sort of cuckoo bird. Ah, yes, the quote-unquote Armenian who works for the Young Turks. Comical. What the fuck? What the, what the absolute fuck? I'm so glad that Anna got exposed. She's always irritated me. So pompous. I think I'm still subscribed to TYT just because I'm curious what the hell they will do next. I have not watched a segment in over a year. Anna's smears of Tulsi just gave her away as an idiot. I used to wonder why Chink didn't fire her already. He was always a little more likable. But like so many others, I mostly subscribed to TYT for Jimmy Dore and Jordan Chariton. After they left, I realized there was no one else on the channel worth listening to. I still think Jimmy should help lead an effort to coordinate all the true progressive independent channels in the vein of TYT, only, intol only honest and intelligent. There should be a directory, at least, somewhere to point, point people to. Has Anna ever left Southern California and she calls herself a journalist? I love how Steph, that's Jimmy's wife, always has Jimmy's back. They're straight couple goals. The lack of self-awareness Anna is portraying is fucking mind-blowing with 700 upvotes. I have never thought highly of Anna Kasparian. I have on several occasions seen her lash out like this when she gets backed into a corner. Backed into a corner being never going public with allegations and then getting made fun of. A lot of people being like, this is precisely why unsubscribe from TYT. <clears throat> uh, 
Listening to this segment makes me feel like a genius for realizing way before Jimmy and company that the Young Turks are rabid lunatics. At this point, Chank should just replace Anna with Alyssa Milano. No difference. 42 upvotes. Jesus Christ. So yeah, I told you there is absolutely a hate campaign boiling. But again... Let's see the segment for itself, okay? Let's see the segment for itself, shall we? Let's, we have to break the story down again, right? So I just want to start out. So uh, Aaron Mate, who works with the Gray Zone, he's been the, uh, and this show have been the preeminent places to be debunking the Syrian pro-war narrative that Assad used gas attacks on his own people, and so we should bomb them. And, and overthrow their government. So that's the same thing we try, did to, to Iraq, same thing we did to Libya. So we're trying to stop it in Syria, but the Young Turks are for it, <laughs> right? And so they keep saying okay, that Aaron... Okay, but that is, that is demonstrably not true from their, from their segment. Like, you might think that they have the wrong position, but they are not for that. Come on working for Assad and he's an Assadist and he gets paid by the Russians that's what they well here I'll show you what they said and yeah. I, don't, I don't know what to say uh, they said uh, Aaron Mate yelled at me and so oh, Aaron Mate oh, lied. Oh, 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 Aaron Mate, oh, everyone cares what Aaron oh, Mate oh, has okay. to say oh, right okay. the guy who denies that Syrian children were killed with chemical attacks yeah yeah and fuck gets Aaron paid Mate by the, yeah fuck gets, you anyway let's move on Russians. let's end the freaking pot I can't I can't okay see that's what happened I can't stand my, I can't stand that guy and I can't stand the very Just intentional facts. disinformation they put out there in regard to- You can hear Jimmy's people in the background uh, like shouting. You could hear, yeah. To disgusting wow. dictators around the world. The very people they- she, she won't ever say what the disinformation is, ever. She'll never say what no, it yeah, is. One of them is Jimmy's wife. Um, yeah. But she just keeps fighting straw men. Here we go. Seem to be working for, to be quite honest with you. Let's move on. All right, we're done. Disgusting. Uh, Absolutely disgusting. But, uh, if Aaron Mate is, uh, feels really warm in his uh, Russian blanket, he's like, oh, but the Russian government favors me. He should be super proud of that. Way to go, Aaron. You did it. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. So and fuck Aaron Mate. By the, yeah, fuck you. Anyway, let's move on. Russians. Let's end the freaking pot. I so there's few things as disgusting as that, right? That's just... They've gotten so used to McCarthy smearing people who they don't like. They did it to Julian Assange. Uh, they said he was working for the someone else. And so here, ro what even Roger else? Waters from Pink Floyd got involved. You want to hear what he had to say? Yeah, of course. Sure. Oh, yeah. Fucking stupid prick. All you have to do is a little bit of research to understand that all the research that has gone into the OPCW uh, debunk. Um, and the huge story that lies behind that, that has been completely ignored by the mainstream media because it's inconvenient. When you look at it compared with the measured arguments of Aaron Marte, who's a fine young journalist, and Joe, whatever his name is, the first president of the OPCW who started... Oh, Bustani. Futa Jose, Jose Bustani, I believe? Exactly. Bustani, exactly. Well, he turned up on the same day that Aaron Marte did, all right, to give evidence to a hearing of the Security Council um, into the whole story of Duma and the fact-finding mission and the falsification of the evidence by the OPCW and blah, blah. And it's there. It's there for anybody to read yeah. chapter and verse. And it's since... G Let's skip ahead. Pretend. I want to. I want to stay on the stuff that's relevant. I don't care much about their argument about Syria. To be completely honest, she tweets out a doctored video, a deceptively edited video, and she says, "Does calling Assad a hero qualifies being an Assadist?" So here's the video. She's saying, claiming that Aaron Mate called Assad a hero. Here's what. Here's what. Here's the video. The deceptively edited video first. Assad is an understandably is understandably a hero. Uh, because he's the face of the government that liberated those towns. Right. And people can't process that thought because Westerners have been so bombarded with propaganda aimed at demonizing Assad. This is always the case. Again, even though we've lived through the Iraq war, we lived through Libya, this happens. It's the same playbook every single time. Sorry, where is In the, the name of human rights. 
So that's the deceptive. They said it starts off with him saying Assad is an understandably is understandably a hero uh, because he's the face of the government that liberated those towns. So here's the full quote. Ready? Here we go. I mean, you yourself said that it was creepy. There are a lot of Assad photos. There's nothing that I don't think newsworthy about that, though. And there's I'm not, a, look, there's, like, there's, there were a lot please, of Assad. Yeah. yeah. It, but, but, but again, you wow, know, I don't want to. I didn't know that aristocracy. Disparage it because, again, to people who just lived through a war. Yeah. where the alternative is living under Saudi armed fanatics. Yeah. Assad is an understandably is understandably a hero uh, because he's the face of the government that liberated those towns. So as Katie Helper pointed out, here's the video which Matthew Dimitri edited. I, I don't think, oh my God, they're talking about Matthew Dimitri. Oh my God, are they talking about, oh no, they're, oh no. Yes, this is the one. Oh no, it's this guy, it is. It's this guy. It's the Civ 6 guy. Oh no, this is the guy we roasted. Okay, this guy, oh God, listen. Oh no, oh no, no. It's Matthew Dimitri, he comes back again. Oh God, okay, all right, okay, all right. Let's, let's, let's bring it back in. Let's bring it back in here for a second, okay? Oh my fucking God. Okay, so is this deceptively edited? Um. <sighs> Uh, I don't know, but that's not what Anna posted. That was what Matthew Dimitri posted, right? Like, can we confirm that? Let's see if we can confirm that. Let's go to Anna Kasparian. Where's the original one? Would have been, uh, Remember when Aaron Mate was in was in Syria in behalf of a pro-Assad group and lied about the Yarmouk being bombed by ISIS instead of the Assad regime? I'm sure the constant Assad cover-ups is just a coincidence. Opposition. It's a sad story because, you know, there are factions in that camp that took the side of the opposition. And that led to this just senseless war a different that clip. left the camp in ruins. I mean, it really escalated when ISIS occupied the camp. Okay, so this is a different one. She's not claiming that. Let's see if she claimed it here. Does calling Assad a hero qualify as being an Assadist? Because if that, along with minimizing brutality, children were killed with. Said Aaron yeah. Mate yelled at me. And so oh, Aaron Mate lied. Oh, oh, Aaron Mate. Oh, everyone cares what Aaron oh, Mate oh, has to say, oh, right? Okay. The guy who denies that Syrian children were killed with chemical attacks. Yeah, yeah. And fuck gets Aaron paid Mate. By the, yeah, fuck you. Anyway, let's move on. Russians. Let's end the freaking pot. I can't. I can't. Okay, see, that's what happened. I can't stand. My, I can't stand that guy, and I can't stand the huh. very intentional disinformation they put out there in regard to disgust. Okay, and then now Anna retweets a a tweet by Saddam did commit huge atrocities against his own people. In the case of Assad, the atrocities that Syria and Russia committed were committed in the process of defending their country from a war. So if you don't, if you're actually a Saddam did- He's lying. He's literally lying. Holy shit, we just live proved that Jimmy Dore is lying. That is not the tweet. That is not the video that she posted she did claim that he that he called uh, assad a hero but she did not post a doctored video he actually just lied look we have it right here you have just watched that be exposed as a lie right here she did not tweet that vid the video that video she was commenting on other videos so Jimmy is just lying, just flat out lying here. Incredible. Actually incredible. It very deceptively, as you will see, Aaron says two people who just lived okay. through a civil war where the alternative is living under Saudi armed fanatics. Assad is understandably a hero. Of course, Dimitri cuts out the beginning and Anna Kasperi tweeted it out. No, she didn't. She didn't tweet this out. We just verified that Jimmy is just flat out lying about what was going on here. He even has it on the screen and he's lying that brazenly. That's pretty bad in my opinion. And then she says the unedited video changes. So people were like, she says the unedited video changes nothing. And you know that. What? It'd be nice if 
you maybe address the second tweet in my thread where he literally minimizes Assad's brutality. What's your excuse for that one? Go. That's what? the thing. And keep in mind, just so that we're clear, when she says the second tweet in my thread, that's the video that she tweeted. She did not tweet out the first video. Katie Halper, or Katie Halper, was heckling her about a video she didn't tweet. What in the... So... And Katie comes back and says, please stop projecting. I'm going to sleep. But if you haven't understood the difference We're gonna between get there. calling someone a Bi hero and bikinis. explaining why people see someone as a hero, I'm happy to explain it to you. Literally, all you had to do is admit you posted a dishonestly edited clip. You could have said it was an honest mistake. You undermine whatever argument you make because you're clearly not in good faith. And then she tweets out, this is embarrassing. Yeah, for you. For you. Genuine question. Has Kasparian ever done a segment on the genocidal U.S. sanctions on Syria? No. They've never covered the OPCW whistleblowers either. Just like the rest, just like MSNBC. Is that true? Is that true? Let's, let's find out. Let's find out, huh? Maybe, maybe they have. I think that's very hard to verify. I don't know if that's true that she's never done a segment on that. And I don't know how we would be able to learn that without going through their whole library, right? It's very hard to verify. That's what they... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it seems like there might be a little intentionality in that, huh? All right, let's continue. Let's continue. See? They're not going to cover it. Aaron Mate will cover it, and he'll probably win another award for it. Of course not. In Anna Kasparian's defense, she might not even be aware of them. So he's responding to this. Has she ever done a segment on the genocidal U.S. Okay. sanctions in Syria? And Aaron says, of course not. In her defense, she might not even be aware of them. Nice. So it gets even nice. worse, Max, before I bring you in. She, she re she, Anna Kasparian is now retweeting Bellingcat. So this is, this is that anti-interventionist piece of group that gave awards to people who were covering Syria correctly and she's trying to say it's pro Assad we're pro Assad which is like saying people who were debunking the WMD's lie about Iraq were pro Saddam Hussein that's what Anna Kasparian's saying what? that's what Bellingcat is now Bellingcat as we've shown you on this uh what? show many times takes money directly from the U.S. government and NATO to tell lies about places like Syria, <clears throat> Libya, and anybody like Max Blumenthal or Aaron Mate or me, if we're doing good work debunking the pro-war narrative, they're going to smear you because they're being true? paid to do propaganda. And they admit it. They admit that they get paid by the government, the NED, the National Endowment for Democracy. They admit it. They don't. They they can't hide that. And but nobody that knows what that is. And so does. And uh, obviously, Anna Kasparian has no idea. But there she is retweeting what does these this have garbage to do with propagandists anything? that we are here. So what does to this out? have to do with anything? We've been outing them on the regular, and she's retweeting them. So okay, I'm gonna uh, jump ahead and I'm gonna see. She then said, <laughs> "So, really harassing her." Wait, hold on. Paid directly here. by the try to smear stable. Indeed, and I like what Chase says. He says TYT should get an IMAX screen for all that projection. <laughs> So this is the kind of things that they will dupe, stoop to to try to smear somebody. They'll first uh, McCarthy smear them, uh, McCarthy say they're working smear? for Assad <laughs> instead of debunking a pro-war narrative, say that they're being paid directly by the Russians. I mean, is there anything scummier they could do than that? I mean, why don't the next thing she's going to do is accuse Aaron of sexually harassing her. Because uh, that's what she's going to try to do to me now. Because this is bothering them so much. She kind, she kind of did. Oh, she did. She, what did she say? She accused him of harassing her. Of her, she accused him of harassment. Ah. Um, <laughs> so, Here's, I mean, it's you're halfway there. Here, well, she's doing it to me because this is really driving her crazy. That we're pointing out that they are doing a uh, repeating State Department okay. talking points. They've always been pro-war. They were pro the Libyan war. They were pro-bombing Syria in 2014, 2014, 2016. <laughs> Watching you guys kick ass right now. <laughs> that was her last DM to me. <laughs> but here's, what she, here's how she's trying to threaten me. And I'll tell 
tell you why this is a big mistake on her part. Wow, okay. She says, I'm sure you remember when you constantly made inappropriate comments about how sexy you found me at work and even felt okay. the need to ask me where I shop for my jeans so you can buy a pair for your wife so she dresses better. Thank you. Uh, that was followed by an apology card you wrote me for Oof. the degrading harassment. I've been holding back, letting you run your mouth nonstop as if you're some sort of warrior for what's good in the world. That's going to change. So now she's, instead of saying I'm paid by the Russians or saying I'm working for Assad, she's now going to try to pretend I sexually harassed her when I was at the Young Turks. So I remember, uh, I remember she's, re re what she's, okay. re uh, so this is this is so far they've reported accurately on this segment. And as we see, he continues as we can see, he continues talking about the saw DMs. How inappropriate she dresses. She Here's dress. that segment. And everybody saw it. And uh so that's why it got such a huge laugh and she was so humiliated. So I felt bad for her. So the next day I wrote her a card saying, Hey, I'm sorry, I won't do that again. That was inappropriate. You don't have to worry about that happening again. I won't comment on your clothes anymore. I should have said no matter how fucking ridiculous. <laughs> you mean you'll stop commenting on her thong? On her thong <laughs> that I could see. Dude, what? The what? That wasn't even in the TYT video. The wife making that comment. What the fuck? Uh, so that's what. So that's this is how low they're stooping now, uh, Max. Is they're gonna? She's gonna try and gin up some kind of bullshit like this. Some kind of hashtag me too against me. And what she, what she doesn't realize is that she's revealing that the reason why she's coming forward with this some kind of accusation isn't because it bothered her and it was true and that she was traumatized and that she's trying to get back at me because I'm telling her, telling the world about their poor journalism. So she's literally, I'm going to fucking hashtag me too you because of what you're saying about my journalism. That's not how it's supposed to work. That's not supposed. Um, to this be a is, so far, this is literally worse than what TYT even showed. And Asian. TYT is motivated to show him in the worst light as possible because they're going up against him. For someone critiquing your work. Uh, I'm going to hashtag me to you for fucking... That, that's, not, that's not how it's supposed to work. Uh, so you just you kind of screwed the pooch there. But good luck. Good luck. I'm sure you'll get some uh, shit libs to retweet it for you. But it will have got I don't have a manager and I don't have a human resource department. So uh, let's bring in Max now. Uh, Max, where, where would you like to take the conversation? <laughs> yeah, this isn't uh, really where I thought the conversation was going to go. I don't have the same history with these people. So uh -huh. I uh, have no problem with. Anna Kasparian's style of dress. I, I, uh, let's talk to have, the, we have, we don't have a dress code at the gray zone. People can show up however they want. Um, I, I do have a problem with this campaign of McCarthyite lies. And honestly, like, I'm, I'm even hesitant to get in the gutter with these people. I mean, looking at her tweets today and they also, you know, they're directed at me and, Everyone's a Russian agent. Everybody, um, everybody's a Russian. Know, just it really Can is like see a trashy suburbanite version of the Steele dossier. It's like, oh, just so dude, good. for real. So now he's he's saying she's like tr a trashy suburbanite. Like after after we just talked about sexual harassment. What the fuck? level and so base level and what basically happened here is so juvenile basically she and Jenk got caught trashing Aaron in not just a McCarthyite way but a slanderous false way the same way so many people have been slandered for the last four or five years since Russiagate became this mainstream phenomenon and anyone who went against the official narrative or anyone affiliated with Trump was colluding with Russia and if this all became acceptable, um, you know, she got caught. Aaron wasn't supposed to see that. And basically, I saw some tweet by someone who was actually, you know, trying to hype it up, like, yeah, based Anna Kasparian. 
And Aaron saw it, so he called them out. He responded as it was his right to do. And now it's ballooned into this. Talk? For her, it just seems what, like what a, are they even attempt, talking a desperate about? attempt to defend her reputation. And what she's doing— Her reputation a, from what? From Jimmy Dore openly admitting that he sexually harassed her? Fact, in, uh, in an objective sense, is she is manufacturing consent— for a dirty war that she doesn't understand. She clearly doesn't even know the basic facts of it. And replicating and extending the whole paranoid, sick McCarthyite narrative of Russiagate to attack independent media and accuse us all of being Russian agents. And so it's just like getting it's it's like getting at such a gutter base level with people who are operating on such a primitive mindset when what we should be talking about are the issues that Aaron and what, you know, I went to Syria to help expose for Americans because we're, this is where the sausage is made. This is where the decision is made to starve what? the entire Syrian population through the Caesar sanctions so that now the World Food Program finds that 56% of Syrians are food insecure. They don't have enough food for the day. We want to talk about oil tankers from Iran going to provide Syria with basic fuel because no one else is allowed to under these sanctions. What and they're getting torpedoed by the Israelis. We want to talk about the U.S. troops that are occupying one-third of Syria, its northeast region, a totally devastated region where this, half the city of Raqqa was destroyed by U.S. bombs. No, she said that Aaron Mate lied about uh, ISIS bombing the Yarmouk okay. refugee. Okay, we've seen enough of this. We saw that what... TYT reported is indeed accurate that what TYT showed and commented on was not cut out of comp context. In fact, I would argue it was favorable. They showed the most favorable clips to Jimmy Dore. So what we have now, and let's just lay this out so that we understand what we figured out in our investigation so far. So far, Jimmy Dore has admitted that the event happened. He has admitted that he wrote an apology letter because he felt bad for how humiliated she was, that she was humiliated in front of a whole bunch of people, the details of which we have found out that without any major contest, that these were students, these were Anna's students that he chose to do this in front of. And he thinks it's funny and stands by it to this day and in fact thinks he should have gone harder. He trivializes Me Too, and he, he claims that Anna Kasparian is pretending about sexual harassment. So far, what our investigation has revealed is that Jimmy is so far in the wrong here that it's, it, is, it is beyond... Uh, beyond uh, a, a shred of doubt in this case. Beyond a shred of doubt. There is even, again, and by the way, I don't think Max Blumenthal gets to, wa gets to waltz away from this clear. Um, after Jimmy goes on a obviously patently misogynistic, uh, victim-blaming, disgusting, pr and, and not just disgusting, but pridefully disgusting he is proud of his actions after jimmy goes on this rant max blumenthal says uh describes anna kasparian as uh as running the trashy suburbanite steel dossier that is really bad that is really really bad wow okay all right, so there's one last thing I wanted to check in on. Because um, I've heard about a segment that was done by another major figure on the online left that many of us know, Sam Cedar and the Majority Report. And I'm very interested to see what Sam has to say about this. And I'm also interested to note there is a huge amount of dislikes on this video, way more than most of Sam's videos get. Let's take a look at another one by, by comparison. So we have this video about Jimmy Dore. Let's click on the Marjorie Taylor Greene video. 
12 dislikes on, on a video about Marjorie Taylor Greene, who is somebody who has a rabid fan base, 12 dislikes, but on the Jimmy Dore video, on the Jimmy Dore, 1,500 dislikes. And here we have the Jimmy stands in here. You do realize Jimmy Dore apologized to her for this seven years ago? No, he didn't. He's proud of it. We just saw him do it. I can't decide what's more disgusting, him or his wife. Sam, it takes you too long to make a point. Why not ma mention the blackmail? I love how I love how Anna not taking it public and telling him to stop harassing her is blackmail. All right, let's 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 hear what Sam has to say on it, huh? So let me just preface this by saying, I did not see this on on Twitter at first. I got two different comedians sent this to me. Um, and, um, very successful comedians in their own right, um, or in anybody's right, actually. And uh, now you have to understand the mentality of, of, of comedians. Um, I think, you know, particularly, uh, oh, I like my, Emma. my, my friends are, I like are, are sensitive too. to uh, all sorts of issues involving like misogyny and racism and whatnot. But one of the greatest offenses that you can do when you're a comedian is to be really unfunny and to perceive yourself as funny. That's the worst thing Dip for someone who is dispositionally a comedian. When someone is um, unfunny and thinks they're just funny, Sam. That's just that who Sam is, is like almost like that's it's like charming. The most Dr. unforgivable Jellicle. crime. Okay. And so when I watched this, I was like, holy crap, that is misogynist and not funny. Uh, but here is a clip of uh, Demi Jor, who um, is, this is what is so uh, insightful about this guy. He um, is incapable of realizing, like he, he presents this, I think, in such a way that he thinks it makes him look good. Um, but uh, here he is sort of bragging about the time that he... Um, Sexually harassed Anna Kasparian. Uh, yeah, sexually harassed Anna, Anna he Kasparian. He thinks this makes him absolved. It, it's it's bizarre. Uh, here here it is, uh, Demi Jor on his own show. Wait, what? Talking about? I uh, made the yeah, same joke as Sam. I haven't seen this segment. I didn't know that we made the same joke. Privately, after he's going off Oops. on her, you know, Assad puppet, whatever the you, you can keep going or keep that up there. And so it wasn't public. He decided to make it public, and then. This is his, like, they were not going after him on the show. This is his own decision to put this information out there about his own behavior. <laughs> and I'll tell you this story, the story about uh, uh, that. Okay, so they play it, and then we'll go forward. Sort of amazing. Everybody laughed. <laughs> Everybody laughed. Brilliant. And they laughed because it was funny, as opposed to, like, wow, you just made, you just tried to humiliate her in front of a bunch of people. Emma has more to fill in on this story. Yeah. Uh -oh. oh, you just tried to humiliate. You, you just attempted I to humiliate her. I had a feeling Emma might have more details. People, maybe we're laughing because it's uncomfortable. And Look then, at how pissed Nomiki looks. And he says she felt bad because she was humiliated, as if he hadn't done it. As he, if it, no, he literally said I humiliated her. He just said I humiliated her. And he, he did he owned that? Yes, that was the last line he said. I humiliated her. Uh, that, push right. it, push it back a little bit. It sounds so passive. What he's saying, the passive voice here, <laughs> and everybody <laughs> laughed, like they laughed louder than I thought they would, oh, so and so it humiliated her. No, it she got humiliated in the middle of the newsroom, yeah, and I did it, and I felt bad. No, I, I, I did I, it. At that time, we were friendly, and I was just busting her balls, right, for, oh, okay. for dressing like that. Is that how you do room. that? Is that how it works? You're going to bend over and show me your ass? I think that's a little – I'm not offended, but I think that's a little risque. Well, um, it, oh, you're so conservative, Jimmy. So yeah. it's like, that's the thing, right? Like, one, if you were her actual friend, you would take her side if you had that relationship, which I don't even think that would be appropriate in this instance and say like, hey, like, just so you know. But that's not even what happened, one. I mean, I spoke to Anna about this. Like, her underwear wasn't, sh like, I don't even want to get, what, what, what 
is so gross about this too is that Anna ha was a professor at a college. She had her students in studio. Their assignment was to watch the production of TYT. Right. So it wasn't just like the old boys club or- like this, is, this is what I was talking about. Anna's story has corroboration and Jimmy's does not. Like, or, or I should say, B Jimmy confirms the story happened, but his version has no corroboration. And everyone else who has who has commented on it has repeated that that Anna isn't lying about the details. Co-workers who have worked with Jimmy and Anna and there were friends and everyone was there together. He humiliated her or attempted to do so in front of her students and of course she was embarrassed. Of course she was. And she wasn't even dressed in the way that he's saying, but he thinks that this makes it, you know, in some way absolves him. And this wasn't the only disgusting comment that he made to her. And it wasn't the only abusive way that he treated another employee at the company because I have had received messages from crew members. Oh, I've said boy. this on the show before that he was degrading, abusive, whatever the case may be. And I've talked about it on the show and received messages saying, thank you for saying that on the show. I'm not gonna like speak about people's personal experiences that aren't my own, right? But this was part of what informed a lot of my viewpoint, also because I have two eyes and two ears, that so much of his commentary about Ocasio-Cortez was informed by misogyny. And I, I, I would have come to that opinion if I didn't have this background information as well. But this, this is exactly wh who this guy is. And the fact that he thinks this makes him look better it just takes that up 200 notches. I think this is, but this is, when you say this is who he is, this is his business model. This is the business model of that little section on the internet. And we have to make it very clear. This was intentional. There's no excuse. I, I'm not even gonna entertain his argument about what she wore. Who cares? Who cares? Bobby. He's a misogynist. He is using this opportunity to literally amp up his little misogynistic base because they're the ones who fight for him online. Every single move he makes is intentional about keeping his ratings going. And he knows that he and his little buddies and that little circular firing squad who love to go after progressive women or any women, that they make money off of misogyny. And I think that YouTube hmm. needs to crack down on that. I mean, it's like, he also went after Francesca Fiorentini. Yes, no, we know, we know, we know. He's a misogynist, but it's gotta stop. It's yeah. gotta stop. It's, like, uh, it's stop. And, and just so we know, like, this is now three of the most prominent left reporting women who have, n who have now come out to say these things about Jimmy. I... I think that should be a bit of a warning sign that if you have the, you have Nomi Key, who's a, the host of her own show and has been working in lefty politics, democratic politics for a very long time. And just for those of you who don't know, Nomi Key is the real deal. Nomi Key was responsible for uh, for making s really serious changes in the Democratic Party before she began reporting uh, before she began reporting on politics. Uh, Emma Vigland is the co-host of the Majority Report. Anna Kasparian is one of, the, one of the most prominent members of TYT. Like these shows or hate them, this is every sing, like not every single, but a number of the most professional left-leaning women who are coming out to talk about this. to actually use uh, the or, or she was dressed for it and was asking for it type of excuse is just almost like full on parody in and of itself. Um, and I'm not frankly convinced or uh, unconvinced that the idea that she was, um, you know, sort of uh, showing the studio to her students wasn't part of like, you know, this guy's not in touch with anything that he's, you know, whatever, uh, you know, sort of like uh, he has insanity no in his head. Right. Oh, yeah, she's on but Twitch now, too. I, I'm yep. not convinced that that, like, his desire to humiliate her 
was not tied into the fact that she was in a position where she is like you know bringing students in well she's in the position of power right, right exactly. exactly exactly so exactly. so let's bring that powerful woman down a notch that's how i'm going to talk to uh, to francesca fiorentini in an abusive way that's how i'm going to talk about ocasio cortez and other women and uh it really just grates at him when there are women in positions of power that don't take shit and this is how he chooses to put them down it's textbook and just because he liked bernie sanders at one time doesn't mean he has any progressive core values that are something to be espoused i mean the way that his fans are going after Anna and other women speaking out about this shows that this is not the same audience that we're speaking to here. This is yes. a separate, different right wing audience. Yes. It's a lot of right wingers who want to say, oh, I hear both sides. So I'm going to listen to this lefty Jimmy Dore when everything about him just screams misogynistic right wing racial resentment towards Ocasio-Cortez, towards the squad. I mean, that's everything that's embedded in the way that he talks about politics so i wow. mean like and it's Scathing. not just like stupid youtube drama and i'm emotional about it because i love anna and i don't like it, it, it and i experience sexual harassment too in a very extreme way but like what did i say listen what have i said every femme presenting person in this fucking industry experiences severe sexual harassment including myself it, it it it's it's important because he's completely disempowering a lot of his audience who could have leftist inclinations um and turning them and red pilling them basically and they don't even realize it um, and so if anybody watches that and still thinks Jimmy is like a, a, a good, a good guy, give me a break. Let's continue. Uh, I'll keep playing the video. There's, there's... Go ahead. No, me. Cut them out. But yet will every time Glenn Greenwald says something critical about me, we'll, we'll like it. And because he. I humiliated him. I didn't humiliate him by talking about like his, you know, bad die job at the time or any any of that stuff or his, you know, sort of loser career up until the point where he got on TYT. None of that. I humiliated him because I showed that he didn't know what he was talking about, even though I had given him advance warning that I was doing it and invited him on and, and all that. And I humiliated him on the show so much so that, you know, he had invited me onto his show, but then privately said like no i can't do it and um and and for years and that humiliation has lasted with him um and so this is the the way that he he trades about it but it is you can see it embedded in here his inability to say like i did something wrong never articulates i did something wrong it's i just made a joke that everybody thought was funny because she was so inappropriately Yikes. dressed and then she got humiliated and i felt bad because i was her friend and i saw her get humiliated that's what you do no but first he says first he says he was humili she was humiliated and she was like essentially right to be humiliated but oh. i was magnanimous of course exactly like he's ridiculous. describing the actions you all right i think we've seen enough i think we've seen enough i i think that we've seen everything we need to see to to sort of enter into the last phase of the drama mama segment on jimmy Dore and the anna kasparian self-report or should i say anna kasparian and the jimmy Dore self-report jimmy's a bit sussy no he's not sussy we all know he's the imposter um oh my god like we've now seen everything we have we have truly gone the distance and watched everything necessary here and there is just no possible way that you can conclude that jimmy Dore isn't completely in the wrong here not just in the wrong but disgustingly in the wrong worthy of denouncement in the wrong like oh my god oh my god that was disgusting and let me talk about something else can i talk about uh, let's let's talk about a bit of a serious subject right now. Let's talk about abuser tactics. 
okay? Because uh, there are a couple of things that uh, really, really st strike me out. Or, or that's sorry, I should say there are some things that really strike out as as very apparent red flags. Okay, and one of the things that I want to talk about is a tactic that abusive people often use, and that is public comments. Okay, something that perhaps some of you are familiar with, but that is very very common among people who are serial abusers is that they will make um, extremely uncomfortable uh, boundary-pushing comments, and they will specifically do it in public. And you might go, well, that seems weird. Doesn't that mean that people saw them do it? Well, yeah. But it also means that it becomes more embarrassing for the target of the abuse to speak out against it. It becomes a scene you know, if it's in private and somebody says something to you, you can tell them, fuck off. And nobody will know the difference. But if you've got a bunch of students and coworkers and maybe even your boss in the same room as you, and someone makes a comment that maybe isn't 100% uh, inexcusable, but pushes a boundary really hard in this case, You're in a position because you either let it go and they get away with the thing that they just did and everybody forgets about it, or you make a scene and your life becomes complicated. Isn't that weird how that works? You see, if you don't make a scene, the abuser gets to keep being abusive. The thing that they want, they get to express that control over you, which is what abuse usually is about. Control. It's about controlling another individual against their will. And if you say nothing, the abuser gets what they want. And they know that. They know this. Whether in, they know it instinctually or whether they know it in a cold and calculating manner or maybe both. They know that if you make a stink about it, well, all of a sudden, now there's drama. Now everybody's looking at you. Now everybody's uh, asking about it. You have to talk about it. And they don't have to do anything because they, they know what they were doing. And they'll just downplay it. It's like, ah, it's not what I meant. Ha <laughs> ha, I was just kidding or whatever. Just like Jimmy Dore did. In fact, I would say Jimmy Dore did way more than that. Jimmy Dore way down. Jimmy Dore was like, is so, I can't even believe that he made this segment. I, I, it is so stupid. So monumentally obvious what we, what he was doing. But you'll notice that the price for the victim is doubled down. If you speak up against the abuse, you have a headache on your plate. This is why this is an abusive tactic that needs to be called out. It's not necessarily illegal, but it's certainly unethical. It's certainly manipulative. It's certainly emotionally harmful. And it puts people, specifically professional women, in a position where they have to become the office bitch or they have to endure sexual harassment, which is literally what we have seen in this case. And Chenk owned up to it, to his credit. I have many critiques for Chenk, many, many critiques. And Chenk, by the way, Chenk has some fucking skeletons in his closet with regard to this stuff too. But all of that aside, Chenk owned up to it. He pointed out that Anna was right, was right in feeling like she was in a position. Because if she said anything about it to anybody else other than who was there, it would have made a huge stink. It would have possibly cost Jimmy his job, which is what she didn't want. She just wanted to stop being harassed. So it's it's a bit odd, isn't it? My opinion on this, and this is my opinion, having done our little investigation, but my opinion here is that uh, Jimmy Dore is a creepy uncle-esque misogynist who is more than willing to utilize his rabid fan base to harass, humiliate, insult, and, and damage the lives of professional women that he doesn't like. 
And you could probably look and find plenty of other examples that were brought up by the majority report. This is something I happen to know the majority report has commented on in the past. And I happen to know that there's a lot of women who've commented about this, a lot of professional women in this work, in this space that have talked about this a lot. Jules Chrysler says, this is true. I have put up with harassment because it's a bigger problem to speak up. Yes, that's why harassers usually get away with it. That's why we had a talk about the Me Too movement, because it becomes incredibly, incredibly uh, risky to say anything at all when you're in a position like that. And it makes me it makes me very angry and it makes me a little sad because for all for all of the progress that's been made so much of the world is still is is still a boys club. It's it's still the nasty, offensive, violating, humiliating, dehumanizing locker room bullshit that we all saw so perfectly summed up with Donald Trump's grabber by the pussy comment. Didn't we? That's the kind of stuff that we still see all over these industries. And you wonder, and, and people go, oh, you know, well, it must just be that women aren't as interested in reporting. Women aren't as interested in comedy. Women aren't as interested in video gaming. Women aren't as blah, 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 blah. Nah. It's because it's fucking terrible. It's because you have to be like me and have a fucking iron shell to survive in an industry like this. You've got to be like, I, like, like Anna Kasparian and just develop an iron skin. And we're going to talk about some other stuff as uh, as time goes on, of course. But President Parakeet says, do you think Jimmy Dore is going to be held accountable? I'm seeing so many people on Twitter, some with platforms themselves, defending him, and I'm just so disappointed in that. No, I don't think Jimmy will be held accountable. Not any, not, not any more than what this is. Yeah, there'll be people like me who do a, uh, who do a bit of a, um, you know, an expose or whatever. But no, unfortunately, we are not at that point. Maybe someday something will come out that will destroy his career, but this will not. Because unfortunately, and I hate to tell you this, but this type of behavior is considered acceptable. Still, in leftist spaces, in leftist spaces right now. I'm serious. I'm dead serious, by the way. And if you don't think that's true, well, you got to start paying attention. You really got to start paying attention. Because the misogyny problem on the left right now is going to undermine the left. It is actually going to cause the left to lose. Or at least contribute to it heavily. And it is... Uh, it, it, we shouldn't we shouldn't we shouldn't stand by for this stuff we really really shouldn't and and that's why you know my conclusion if you want the total drama mama conclusion well here you go and here you have it fuck jimmy door fuck jimmy door fuck max blumenthal and you know what fuck those people who had that that washed out uh whatever guitarist or whatever he was Fuck him too. And the reason why I say that, and this is a pretty conclusive ending to a drama mama where I usually try to be as unbiased as possible, but this is the conclusion segment. And my conclusion is fuck Jimmy Dore. Fuck Jimmy Dore. Fuck Jimmy Dore's fans. Fuck people who behave like this. Enough is enough. These types of... I, I, I am so happy to see that both Jenk and... Anna Kasparian both said, we don't want you in our community. And they shouldn't. These people should not be considered, uh, in their current state, acceptable to work alongside. Because if you have 
an audience that is going to mass downvote every single person who points out the obvious, the obvious fact that Jimmy Dore was being a disgusting piece of shit. And you're going to get dislike bombed by Jimmy's fans. Those are not your fucking allies. Those are really not your allies. Those are not our allies. Those are people who are literally undermining everything that we believe in. Everything that we fight for. I've talked about this before when I've talked about um, class reductionism and how I believe that class reductionism is very dangerous because it undermines the one thing that makes the left strong, truly strong, which is solidarity. And class reductionism undermines solidarity. Solidarity is what makes us strong. Likewise, you want to know what else undermines solidarity? Rampant misogyny. Rampant misogyny from rich and powerful figures, leaders, quote unquote, in our political spaces. And I promise you, here's the thing. Ready? Here's the real thing. We don't need them. We don't need them. You, There is no value that comes from Jimmy Dore and Jimmy Dore's fans that we won't get from actually encouraging solidarity. Think about this. Imagine that you're like, oh, but we should work with anybody who's willing to accomplish our goals. Oh, is that so? Well, what if working with that person, that, that let's say that person has, a, let's keep the number small. Let's say a disgusting chauvinist pig has an army of a hundred people that are going to help you. But if you bring them in, you're going to lose 300 more talented women who will just never, ever take off the ground. Because that person, even though he's got his 100 little followers, is empowering you. You're going to lose 300. Hmm. Hmm. See, it's, it's simple math if you really think about it. And I'm willing to guess that Jimmy Dore's pathetic, ineffectual, whining, misogynist fan base is going to alienate more people from the from the online left and from leftism than he's ever going to bring over i just think that's true and also what's worse here's what's even more sinister you want to get what's really sinister because he's not just driving away individuals he's not just driving away individuals he's smothering talent how many people do you think Okay, let's pretend for a second that it wasn't Anna Kasparian in that position. Anna Kasparian is, like her or hate her, a badass. Okay? Let's be real. Anna Kasparian is tough as nails. Okay? That is a fact. I'm sorry. I don't care what you think about her political opinions. She's a badass. Okay? And imagine if it was somebody else. Imagine if there was someone who was just a little bit less tough than Anna, but they might be just as talented. They just might not be as tough just by pure chance because being not everyone should have to be this tough. There are all kinds of talented people who aren't necessarily tough, who are still talented and people like Jimmy Dore smother them. We lose talent. Those people might end up going on to have their own whole fan base, but people like Jimmy Dore smother. So there you have it. This has been Drama Mama. There you have it. The conclusion, stop embracing people like Jimmy Dore. Cut the losses and grow the left by getting rid of people like him.